We're going to relive the history of Cincinnati television next right here on Channel 12 with Nick Clooney, Mary Wood, Len Gurian, Bill Nimmo, Walt Mayer, and the Deep Police Trail. Randy Little and Eyewitness 12 News, they get involved. Live from WKRC-TV, it's the Ira Joe Fisher Show. Now, here's Ira Joe. Thank you. Well, sure. Go ahead. Be rowdy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope you've been watching this week. You, you're probably saying to yourself, why are we doing this sort of thing? You know why we're doing it? Free flowers. Where are my flowers? Oh, there it is. Right there. That's why we're doing it. Listen, today, what a show we have for you. In just a few moments out here, we are going to be chatting with Nick Clooney. We will also be joined by Mary Wood, who was a longtime columnist for the Time Star and the Post, has some wonderful memories to share with us. And Bill Nimmo is going to be here. What a giant in our industry he is. Len Gorian, also a giant in our industry. And Walt Mayer, another giant in our industry. There's hardly going to be room for all of these giants here in our studio. <laughs> I'm so excited about today's show and this entire week in which we're saluting the history of Cincinnati television. Also want to introduce to you the fantastic band that we have with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome please the DeFelice Trio. Here they are, come on. <laughs> on drums we have DeFelice, on the bass Lou Lausch, and on the guitar Kenny Poole. We're glad you guys are here. Just a little, just a couple of seconds, Steve. Just a there we go, okay, great. I think I tripped and fell. I don't know if you saw that or not. We're delighted that you're here, and we're delighted that you are here, and we are delighted that you have tuned in this morning. Stay with us, because coming up next, we are going to chat with one of our favorite people, Nick Clooney. Stay with us. familiar to me so much. Does he look uh, uh, we handsome prince? I'm certainly glad to see you. Welcome to the show. Are you excited about getting married? Never I'm mean? just excited as I can be. <laughs> That's the ugliest witch I've yeah. ever I believe so, but just I think wait. I should have cut down on the fruit. <laughs> He's the star of that show we just saw, Mr. Nick Clooney. I cannot believe you do that. How are you? How are you? How are you? I just feel wonderful. Hi, how are you? I've been talking to our friends backstage. Isn't and that probably, some They were so funny back there. We're probably going to be dull as dishwater out here. I, oh, did you see that close up? That's the, we'll called the uh, Monday Night Football, Tuesday Night Baseball look. This is at terrible. At 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my. I said last oh. night at 11.30 when the ball game finally ended and Nick still had the news to do and a yeah. drive to... You drove to Augusta? Sure, went to Augusta last night, absolutely. They all say, say hello to you. Oh, all the bless their there. hearts. We're glad you're here. I am glad to be here, too. I, uh, with this flower here, I think it should be like this. <laughs> Doesn't it look natural? If this doesn't work out, we'll both be like this. Nick, for heaven's sake. There are a lot of people in our audience who attended your show. You bet. Right, right. in this studio. There are None here old enough to have been at that show. Not one. These are all kids. Oh, there they are. Their Come on, mothers, let's see a show of hands. Let's their, pan that crowd there, TJ. <laughs> their all mothers right. and fathers sent them here just to babysit them. That's all. <laughs> it was fun. Listen, I had a good time. Right in this very studio. Used to be everything in this studio. Right over there, Ira, was the bowling alley. I remember that. Yes, that's where Glenn did bowling. Glenn Ryle did bowling for dollars. Yep. And we had to build our set on top of that. Jeez. So that uh, it was kind of interesting dodging the ten pins. You know, I came at a later time when the budget was lowered, and I did remember bowling for paper towels. Don't you remember that, that show? A lot of people don't remember that. It was a great moment in history. You were a big hit. I was a big hit. Yes, yeah. I was. You were a pin setter. I don't was. Tell them. I was heavy then too. We only had room for eight pins. It was terrible. But no, let's let's talk about let's talk about the beginning days 
what year was it in Maysville, Kentucky? You mean when I started? Yeah. 1951. I was three. It was a, I was a real, <laughs> I was a phenomenon, absolute phenomenon. Three years old, my voice changed. We it have just like that. We have a tape of either your first or one of your very first broadcasts at WTFN. It's WFTM, the world's oh, finest tobacco market, the golden buckle on the burly belt. And here's Mr. Clooney. Now the news. This is Nick Clooney reporting. Allied officers are meeting with communists at a no-man's land rendezvous that might lead to new Korean truth talk. There are no Cut it! Cut it immediately! Isn't that great? Hey. I must tell you, that was, what you heard there was plenty. That was the only part that I didn't stumble over. Oh, That's nonsense. Say, it was 1951. I had started in uh, August of that year. Uh, in my hometown, Maysville, Kentucky, at the radio station, thrilled to be there, still thrilled that I got the job, and still surprised that I got... But the thing about it was, that was, get a load of this, the president was Truman, wow. uh, Eisenhower had not yet decided whether to run for president. Or we no. were at what party? Or, or for what party yep. yet, he was still with NATO over in, uh, in uh, Paris, and a doting relative decided that this should be somehow engraven for posterity, and did that, and get a load of this, made a record of that on a 78. Ooh, you know, yeah, from the 70 inside outside. out? No, actually it was outside, outside in. It in. Was, but it uh, was... No, you, you don't used laugh. To do that. You used to do that. You used to make records that they started on the inside and the record played out. You remember that. No. Well, Nobody here remembers that, Ira. Gee whiz. Ira, Dave Angeline, our old floor director, remembers that. The reason they don't like remember I, that, Ira, is because it was a lie. No, that's a lie. That's, that's never, not true. That never happened. That's absolutely never happened. You made that up. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. But that, but that uh, record was true, actually. A doting relative did that. And any time you feel uh, really strongly about yourself, feel you're doing well, always listen to a record of yourself 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, Isn't it makes that you nice. humble. Isn't really. that nice, though? It was fun. Well, then we, and I'm going to give kind of a thumbnail sketch here because I want us to talk about Cincinnati, but we went to, and it's hard to sketch on this <laughs> thumbnail, the ink rubs right off, <laughs> Wilmington, Delaware. Yes. Then you went to Lexington? No, I was in the Army after Oh, that. Army, that's uh, right. I was with the American Forces Network. Uh, this was the, we used to have blue uniforms in those days. It was a long time ago, <laughs> 4 of 1812. Uh, I know this is over You're in Germany. so tacky, quit it. There was a, it was in Germany, and uh, we, I, I was a PFC so long, I used to get mail saying, are you the world's oldest private first class in the United States Army? This is PFC Nick Clooney. Reporting. You needed a better promotion department. Didn't See, work out. Needed. Yes, I probably needed a better record, too. That would have helped. <laughs> It was fun, and uh, you know, I got to stay in Frankfurt, Germany, and we lived in a in a 600-year-old castle, and uh, it was terrific time. See, that's tough kids. duty. Oh, it was really rough. Or then, then you came back, and after your discharge, you went to work in Lexington. Yes, I did. That was after I, uh, of course, had my famous sojourn in uh, California. Somehow or another, I, I know you'll find this difficult to understand, but somehow or another, the people in California at that time were able to pass up on my obvious talent. And well, after I got out of the service, you know, I didn't have anything else to do. I thought I'd go out and be a movie star. Well, sure. That's <laughs> nice work if you could get it. What a bunch of doofuses. And I think. ran out of mustering out pay and went back to work, you know. <laughs> Which was Lexington. It, yes, it was. Oh, we finally, got, we the finally got the Lexington. That's right. And I had, uh, in the meantime, been in Detroit, Michigan. I had worked there. Uh, XYZ. Yeah, at sure. XYZ briefly. And uh, then back in uh, Lexington, stayed there a long time. And then came to Cincinnati, and yes. you went to WLW. That's right. In 1966, March of 1966, and uh, started doing the Good Morning Radio Show with Bob Braun. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was so that Bob could be prepared to go over and take over 50-50 Club if and when Ruth retired. And Ruth Lyons, in fact, retired the next year, January of 67. Now, you, and you were with her on her final broadcast. Her very last broadcast. None of us knew it was the last broadcast. And, uh... Uh, Ruth, I certainly hope that uh, was not the reason you retired. Because uh, <laughs> you were with I her. was with you. But it was uh, Wednesday, the 25th of January, 1967, and uh, Ruth decided right after that program uh, that she did not want to come back yeah. and made the announcement that Friday. This is not from that particular broadcast, but we do want to share with you a portion of the 50-50 Club with Ruth Lyons and a very special guest at this point. Here it is. I know your sister so well, you know. Ruth, you know, I was just thinking, I was looking around here, and I believe that I probably have known you longer than anybody here except Pete Grant. Really and truly? Met you and Rita Hackett yes, at the same uh -huh. time. You, you did? Remember? I yes. don't remember that. You must have been a little boy. Oh, well, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it was. How it was long ago was it? Uh, well, I was 11. 
Well, that's a little boy, uh-huh. Yeah, and yes, and that was uh, back oh. when Rosemary and Betty were mm-hmm. here. I knew together. them both so well, you know. Yes, I know you did. I love them both. Yes, too. and that's how are they all? They're doing very well, except that Rosemary has a little problem now with the uh, vocal cords. I heard you say cord. about her throat. Uh-huh. Yeah, she had uh, had laryngitis and didn't take mm-hmm. care of it apparently. And same thing, I believe, that Bonnie, Bonnie had. Bonnie had the same thing, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, but I, as I was telling you, oh my nice goodness, the wor- who's that fellow with the uh, <laughs> black hair? <laughs> well, it's so much fun reliving these memories. And then the Nick Clooney yeah. show came into being at Channel 9. Yes, it had many incarnations. Actually, it was up in Columbus first. It lasted 15 minutes. Oh, stop it. It was, oh, maybe an hour he and 15 minutes. So right. It, uh, it did last, it was just about 10 months. It wasn't good enough, you know. And then we uh, came down here on Channel 9 and uh, had a show on there for two and a half years, for which I am eternally grateful. I had wonderful people working on it and uh, with me on it, Len Mink and... Uh, and Jerry Conrad's Rhythm and Brass, and Wirt Kane, and a uh, whole bunch of wonderful folks. Fred Wymore in one of his incarnations was over Denny there Jansen as well. worked on the show. Denny True. absolutely did, yeah. yes, and here as well. Yep. When, I, uh, when I came over here, uh, there was a, a year uh, between the two shows, and then I was over here. And we're delighted. And you, you've, you've been here uh, as uh, the director of news and the chief anchor and editor since 76, it was. Yes, that's when we started doing news again. Back when I was in Lexington, I was uh, the uh, weekend anchor and what passed for the news director down in uh, at Lexington. We didn't have a very extensive news department. We had an AP machine and me. <laughs> uh, Remember but, a station that didn't even have that, Nicholas. <laughs> Big newscast of the day came when the morning mail arrived. Yeah, I understand. We are so excited to talk about this and to relive this history of which you were such a very vital part. Someone else and a friend of yours oh, is here with us, too, and a new friend of mine, and you're going to meet her when we come back. An outrageous person She's is. Mary Wood, and we'll be right back. Go, go away. All right. She has known just about everybody, and she has written so well about them, and uh, she's joining us now to chat about them here on our program. Ladies and gentlemen, former columnist for the Cincinnati Times, Star and Post, would you welcome, please, Mary Wood. Rowdy. Rowdy, thank you. Hello, Mary. Hello, darling. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Lovely to see you. Good to see you. Please have a seat. And you thought I was dead, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're about to dispel that rumor right now. <laughs> Mary, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. You know, I have heard so much about you, and you are such a part of this history of Cincinnati and the television and radio industry and the newspaper industry. I- I'm really thrilled to meet you, and I'm so happy to have well, you here on the show. thank you. I'm You're... thrilled to meet you, too. Well, thank you very much. You know, our paths never did cross. No, and... I'd retired when you came. Yeah, well, that's why I did this show. I've kind of retired. <laughs> We're delighted to have you here. Now, well, thank you. have you watched our show this oh week? Oh, my God, I cried for two days. Is that right? It was I that bad. Say... Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying our oh. best, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... Uh, oh, very nostalgic. Bob right? and... Oh, golly. This beautiful. city has such a wonderful history. Don't we? You started in New Orleans and then came here and wrote for a while at WLW Radio. No, I was born in New Orleans. That's what I, I meant when you, when you started <laughs> in New Orleans. That's what I meant. Yeah, that's a, but at any rate, my dad uh, moved from the Times Picayune to the Enquirer, and we came up, and I tried desperately to get a job on the uh, Enquirer, but they uh, wouldn't hire me. <laughs> so WLW did, and I was there for um, mm, about four or five years, you made and then big, I got fired. You made a big mistake. You asked for a raise. I did. World's lowest wages. <laughs> what WLW stood for. WLW, world's lowest wages. And then uh, I went down to the post, and that was uh, 43, the war was on. And they were hiring anybody who could read and write, so they hired me. Well, you certainly qualify for that. Let me, at this point, I I think it would behoove us to mention some of the books that uh, Mary has written. And here they are, Just Lucky, I guess. A uh, collection of your columns and some reminiscences. Yeah. And this one I love, In One Ear and Gone Tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that great? And then also, and on a future show, we're going to talk about this at length, but you have written the reminiscences of your grandmother, Maria Jane Southgate Hawes. That well, is wonderful. Actually, she, yeah. I didn't write it. She wrote it in 1883. I understand that. Yeah, about, it's about early Cincinnati and the war between the states. Um, she was born in 1836. 
visit that summer. downtown on Fifth Street and uh, tells about what she went was on. Born on Fifth Street. She was born on. Mary, Fifth your whole Street. family's been outrageous forever. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, not in the middle of the street. But not in the street. Oh, no, okay. Well, I was just. Are you really? Are you really going to let her sit here and pretend she's a very straightforward woman, like she's pretending to be right <laughs> yeah. here? Yeah. Well, am I making a mistake in oh, this for Jeffrey? Well, I'm telling you, Ira, you've got to go. I have to segue immediately to the Plaza Hotel in New York. Oh no. Yeah. Oh let's, yes. Let's talk about that, Mary. You had a somewhat uh, yes, tacky uh, occurrence in the beautiful plaza uh -huh. in Manhattan. What happened to you? Well, I <laughs> can't was believe food, you brought this food. up, Clooney. <laughs> I can't either. Uh, I was on my way to England next morning and I packed my pajamas on the bottom of I'm staying in a little suite at Plaza Hotel which is terribly chic far more than I and uh -huh. I got up to go to the John about three o'clock in the morning and you know the I forgot where the door was and now I'm wearing nothing but a wristwatch <laughs> I mean and I'm a middle-aged lady with three grandchildren. <laughs> and suddenly the door closed, and I was not in the bathroom. I was out in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Well, at least you knew what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The trouble was, you can't kill yourself with a wristwatch. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I sat there, I prayed a lot, <laughs> and I'm trying, I've got everything covered as much as I could. You don't have to demonstrate, Mary, it's okay, we, we got the picture there. Bring her a watch, somebody bring her a watch. And the watch is showing, that's all. And I was hoping that a woman would come down the hall, but it was a young man. <laughs> and he looked at me, and he couldn't believe what he saw. Obviously not a native New Yorker. <laughs> And he wanted to know what I was doing there, and I tried to explain, and I asked if he would go down and get the uh, bellman, because it was impossible for me to go on, get on the elevator and go down to the desk. So he gave me his coat. Oh, God, I was so glad to get his coat. <laughs> and a few minutes later, he came back with the desk clerk, and he was terribly elegant, and he said, Madam, what? are you doing here? <laughs> I said, I am here because you put your damn bathroom in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, Mary, isn't that great? Oh, for heaven's sake. So he rescued you, as it were. Yes, yeah. he opened the door, and uh, you see, I didn't think this was funny. Yeah, no, no. I didn't think this was I at all. I can't believe funny. you're laughing at this, I either. This either. Is this but is at any rate, on the way over to London, I was telling all my colleagues, the other TV critics, about it, and they were rolling in the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, if it's this damn funny, I'll write it. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. And you did. And she did. Most popular column I ever wrote. <laughs> Mary, that's just, just wonderful. Well, one of many columns that you wrote, we have uh, now come to that point of the program again where we need to take another break. And when we do, we're going to return with another friend of yours and, in fact, the entire nation's, Mr. Bill Nimmo. We're going to chat with him when we return. One person's gift to United appeal may not seem like much, but when one person gives, gives, others join in. And that's what makes United Appeal work. Helping all, all the, the homeless, homeless, all the hungry, all the handicapped is too much for, for one, one person. person. That's why we need all of you to give to United Appeal. It's simple well, math. math. One person's gift to United Appeal plus one person's time. time spent volunteering to help. It all adds up. Give to United Appeal. United, we make a difference. Cincinnati with someone you know. Invite a friend or someone special to come and experience all we have to offer. A message from your Greater Cincinnati Convention and Visitors Bureau. Crime Stoppers works, but only with your help. Every Wednesday night at 5.30, Deborah Dixon and Eyewitness 12 News reenacts crimes in the tri-state that haven't been solved, hoping you'll have a clue. Make Cincinnati a safer place to live. Watch Crime Stoppers Wednesdays at 5.30 on Eyewitness 12 News. They get involved.
All right, we're going to meet that dapper gentleman who went from Western Hills High School to the networks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, please, to our program, Mr. Bill Nimmo. Hey, hey. Hi, Bill. Hi, Nick. Hi, doll. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, look at the people. You know, you guys are being awfully dignified when you get out here. You know, back there, you were pretty rowdy, Bill. Oh, come on. Well, I know. Lenny and I were nothing if not decorous. Is Len still back there, for heaven's sake? He's going <laughs> to yes. be out here. Soon. Bill, let's talk about this. Now, I uh, discovered things about you I wasn't aware, and I, and I have to say, in all honesty, I remember so very fondly your work uh, when I was a couple of years younger than I am now. You know how to hurt a guy, don't oh, you? Oh, stop it now, and I mean that as the highest compliment, because uh, you were a contributing factor, as many of your colleagues were, to my wanting to get into this business, because mm. of your level of professionalism and your, uh, the delight that you took, obviously, to the work that you did. Something you wanted to do from the time you were a little boy here in Cincinnati? Not a little boy, but I guess so, yes, because when I was four years old, I played the drum with a Scotch band at Keith on Walnut Street. Oh, yeah. Isn't that something? And then one night, I remember, for charity, we went up to Vine Street to the, the, the then Empress Theater, the later, the, later the Gaiety, yeah. now the library. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's progress. <Yeah. laughs> and I remember the, the drum was higher than I was, and uh, the, 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 the lights were very bright, and I would hear this wild applause as we went into the loud part, and they said, I used to look around the drum to see what was going on. <laughs> but I guess... Ever since then, I wanted something like this. You yeah. have one of the great voices. Well, I used to walk along the street saying, this is WLW, the nation station, Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Crosley Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> Isn't Never that wonderful? That someday. Yes. He still does that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew him when he was a little boy. Well. <laughs> oh, you were a little boy, too. <laughs> <laughs> so then you got a job at WLW. You were one of the, one of the first, as they called them, disc jockeys. Yes. You know, and it, and it was said with great dignity and reverence. This was 1947. <laughs> See, I became one, and they didn't say it with the same dignity and reverence, Bill. <laughs> That's why I bring that up. And you had a, a, a late-night disc jockey We show. even had a disc jockey convention in Chicago in 1947. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I had lived in Paris for a year after the war, one of the happiest years of my life. And uh, I heard that there was an audition at LW for an all-night jockey to take Jim Gaylord's place, Mary. Oh, yeah. Let us digress for a moment. Speaking of World War II, uh, Bill was decorated. You went from uh, private first class and came out as a major in World War II. Is that correct? Well, yeah. You were an enlisted man, and then you what you get yes. a field commission or went something? Went to OCS. But listen to this. I want to tell you this. Bill, in World War II, was wounded in action, received the Silver Star, the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart Combat Infantry Badge, and the Invasion Arrowhead. Uh, significant contribution to the history of our country right there. Sure, you bet. Um, <clears throat> But then you decided to do something dangerous, and that was to get into show business, right? By the way, all you had to do to get those things was be in the first division. Yeah, That's all right. you had to do, believe me. Yeah, I'm sure it was just uh, no problem. Yeah, and I went down, and they said, have you ever done radio? I said, yes, I was on the American Forces Network in Germany. I had been for about 30 seconds one night. I was interviewed. So a tiny lie. Yeah. But I, I got the job, the all-night disc jockey show. Isn't that And wonderful. loved it. And, and then... You were as, loved. Uh, as they got their TV license and grew up, I sort of grew up with it. Here you are going over the traffic what? conditions in Cincinnati. <laughs> Must be a stormy, wintry night. And look at how neatly attired you are, Bill. Bill Holden. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Bill Nimmo holding the map is what that is. And here you are as a spokesman for Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. I shaved that off, by the way. Yeah. Glad. And you did that on the Friday night fights. No, the Wednesday night fights. Wednesday night. Gillette fights. was Friday. Oh gosh, Wednesday that's was right. Look sharp, sharp feels sure, six yeah. wonderful years, young. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. What do you have? Pabst <laughs> Blue Ribbon. <laughs> what? What are we? Who are we talking to here, Bill? Oh, look, can we see that again, Tom? I'm sorry. We. Who is this now? That was oh, my was last Bob day Shreve. on LW. Willie Thaw and Bob oh, Shree. Yes, yeah. and Margot Good. Yes. And Honor Nichols, Bob Merriman's in the back, I think, and they gave me a watch. Now, oh, and by the way, that was the Parkview Market Show, a holler dollar. We were on five days a week, and we had a, a writer who got a fast 75 a week. His name was Rod Serling. Isn't that oh, something? Well. Rod yeah. Serling. And that, that watch that you were given, you loaned to Mary when she stayed at the plaza. Isn't yes, that right? That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. So you went on to. Why couldn't you? I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, now the oh, real story. No. 
Now the real story comes That's out. Right? My and you heard it here. On Why do we have the scoop, huh? And you will hear it on the news. Second lead. Wait a minute. Let me write this down. Can I have the date, please? Let's see there. Scandal Bill, rears its ugly head here. Bill and Mary. Okay, it's called. Oh, gee. Bill, and then you went to then you went to uh, New York City, and gosh, you did to. a bunch. Of, <laughs> you had to leave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can hear the ticking of the watch. <laughs> you worked for ABC, CBS, NBC, the Dumont Network. Dumont, yes. For, and I, I like it. On, uh, I, I looked at one of your old resumes. Now listen to this. Here's what it says that uh, Bill was doing at one point in his career. He was an announcer, a newscaster, singer, MC, disc jockey, etc. <laughs> what, <laughs> what? Yeah, what could possibly be etc. I did live shows in various bistros. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard about the beauties in the bistros, I'll tell you that. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you remember most fondly? What do you remember? D did you feel you were a part of history when you were working here in Cincinnati before you went off to that Big Apple? I don't think really. Weren't aware of it? No. We, it, it was so much fun then. Uh, LW was then Channel 4, remember mm. Mary? And we were the only show in town for well over a year, I guess. Oh. So everybody that had a TV set, you know, <laughs> sure. watched us. Sure. And there were no experts then. Nobody knew what was going on. The, uh, the, the sponsors, the clients, people from the agency said, look, we don't know what you, you do. Do it the way you want. Gee. Of course, six months later, they were all experts. <laughs> yeah, know. suddenly expertise came yeah. out. Well, yes. When it first started, we would go to the top floor of the Karoo Tower and do an on-camera station break. Oh, for heaven's sake. They'd shoot us from here up. Is that right? This that. is bad. Uh, 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 this <laughs> Oh, indeed. Well, it's some wonderful memories, and we have more to share with you, too. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to meet one of my favorite people, a dear friend of ours, Len Goring. Stay with us. As we have already mentioned, this very studio has been the place where lots of history of Cincinnati television has been made. We hope in a small way we're contributing to it. We know in a large way our next guest has contributed to the history of television here in our beloved city. Would you welcome, please, dear friend of ours, Mr. Len Gorian. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> look at you, aren't you? Sit down, be comfortable. Don't we look like something in the funeral parlor? <laughs> oh. Speak for yourself. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, speaking of the gaiety. <laughs> Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. Yes, How are you? Nick says, we're, we better stop bringing guests out. We're going to run out of couch here for a second. I know you've been in a snit because you've been waiting back there. Now, what's on your mind? Well, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at this old man over here. Do you know, he and I are most probably in, uh, in age as far as being on television, the oldest two men in town. 1947-48, we put the first show together called Dance Time with Nancy Wright. Then we used to do our station breaks in the booth that was this big, and I'd sit on his lap because there was no room for the two of us. Oh, here's and another story. Wait a minute. <laughs> then we did Teen Canteen down. with Betty Clooney. And Betty, that's right, that's Teen right. Canteen. But uh, let me finish what you Wait, used to Bill, do to me. Wait, Bill, did he really booth. sit on your lap? That's what I want to find uh, out. I, I sat on, don't you remember that little booth I used to do the breaks with you? And sure. I'd sit and on your lap. Sometimes I'd sit on yours. <laughs> <laughs> Known as Turnabout Fair Play. <laughs> oh, those were the days. But, Len, you, a native of Brooklyn, New York, you came to Cincinnati. How come you stayed? Why you is that? You can't pronounce it as Brooklyn. The Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn, New York. Uh, well, what had happened is I was at the uh, Fort Thomas uh, Air Force Hospital during the war, and I met my wife here, Merle, who was a ballet dancer with the opera. And my dad died while I was in the service. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, well, you, you better ballet. Say ballet. I know. I was going to say you have that New York accent. Ballet. I thought you said belly dancer for a second, and I wanted to clear that up, Len. Ballet. <laughs> <laughs> and where was I? You were moving to you Cincinnati. Were You're very yeah, kind. Yeah. Thank you, all of you. You know, well, at our age, sometimes you forget where, what the story was. Anyhow, what but story? <laughs> Mary, say something. <laughs> Any gal who gets caught in a position like she's in shouldn't say anything at all. <laughs> uh, but uh, this, this town was really the place where television just about started. We had more stations going here than New York did at one time. Isn't that something? And, and it, was, it was splendid. 
you asked whether or not there was anything you could remember that was exciting. No, you know what the excitement was? No matter what we did, it was brand new. So everything we did was great. And I worked at one time for a man by the name of Mort Waters, who was just one of the greats in the business. Channel the head 9. Of Channel 9, the head of uh, Scripps Howard, uh, <coughs> telecast. And one thing about Mort, the door of his office was always open. You came with an idea, he says, let's try it. Isn't that And great? we did. We tried everything. And it was fun. Now, no matter what you do, somebody else has done it, no. done it better or worse, but then, you know. Hey, Land, now let's be honest. Not everything was absolutely terrific. Do you remember the things when Paul Dixon first started doing the disc jockey show on the air for four, five, six hours? you remember what some of the things were we looked at? We looked at the bowl of goldfish. <laughs> Remember that with the with the fish fish going ba da ba da ba for three minutes. And they were out of sync. Out of sync. <laughs> and then, you remember? And then we would have the kaleidoscope. You remember? We have the little thing. This was for six minutes. The thing would go ka ching ching. Somebody back back there would go ka ching ka ching. Thank you, Nick. I was the producer. I know. <laughs> Great innovative you ideas. You know, some uh, people don't un uh, know this or remember this. Paul Dixon had two stints in Cincinnati. Yeah. The first, an original Paul Dixon show was on WCPO television. You and produced I was the that. producer. Yeah. I was the producer. Yeah. Tell and them that, that was the mad one. That was an hour network and two hours local, five days a week. There I am. That's what happens to you when you're producer. That's yeah. it. That's, 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 by the way, one that, of my better pictures. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, that's yes, how Margarita yes. looks every day. I'm yes. <laughs> and then we have Paul Dixon is there on the left. But you obviously were a real dignified producer. You obviously got a little bit well, involved. Well, you know what happened? It, it was a strange thing. Everybody contributed. I was Paul Dixon's second banana. Yeah. Uh, there was Wanda Lewis, of course, and of course, Dottie, Dottie Mack, Mack, who, by the way, oh, I spoke yeah. to the other day on the phone. She's coming back into town. She'll come and visit us. I hope she'll visit you. Yeah, so. She looks exactly like she did those... Now, there's a picture. There's Bob Shree when he was young, me in the middle, of course, that's and Wanda. your career right there. <laughs> right there. That's uh, a hat. Bring the ladder, Gory. And Wanda Lewis. Can't find the steps. <laughs> that, by the way, was in this studio, right where we're sitting now. That is the that is the Len Gory in show, and that's your guest, Jimmy Durante. Jimmy Durante. Yeah, and and Nick is still that, using those microphones, microphones on the news. Same for yours. It's the same one. My Cut microphone. My, look at the bottom. You'll find my initial scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story about that. Uh, uh, Jimmy Durante came in to do the show with me. We started talking. He's such a funny, terrific guy. In the middle of the show, while we're on the air, Wade Hoyt comes walking in the studio, walked right down the aisle, right up to the thing. He said, Jimmy, I haven't seen you since 1926. And Jimmy looked up. <laughs> well, Wade Hoyt, as you remember, was a Yankee pitcher, great one. And in the off-season, they used to do vaudeville. Well, he and Jimmy did vaudeville together. And Jimmy looked up. He said, wait. You're well, they started talking and talking. And I said, and looked at him and said, hold it, fellas. I know it's my show. But obviously you don't need me. You mind if I sit in the audience? He says, not at all. I went outside the audience and finished the show for me. Listen, I want to I want to take a second here to say that uh, now I came to Cincinnati six years ago, and this man, Len Gorian, uh, has, has been such a friend to me and so kind to me and such an encourager that it's something that I will never ever forget. We joke around all the time, but it needs to be said and said publicly. What an inspiration you have been to me personally. What a friend you have been. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Let me tell you about our friendship just for a moment. You did a poem or something like that on Autumn. I asked you if you would send a reprint. It was so beautiful. It was so touching. Made my, my eyes tear. You not only sent it to me, but a beautiful handwritten note at the end of it. And I've loved you ever since. You're well, one heck of a nice well, man. Well, and I only charged him five dollars. There you go. go. This, this is such a thrill to have these people here assembled to chat about the history of Cincinnati television. We're going to meet someone else from history and the present as well, Mr. Walt Mayer, when we come back. Stay with us. Well, let's face it, there are certain things that are pure as Cincinnati. Mm, chili, Grater's Ice Cream, Mount Adams, Fountain Square, the Bengals. And our radio show's a lot like that. We've been here a long time, and people know they can depend on us. And they seem to like us. Now there is somewhere to turn for more news and information. Eyewitness 12 at 7. Randy Little and the Eyewitness 12 news team not only report the news, they go one step further, giving you more than just another newscast. They talk to the unique and interesting people of the Tri-State with George Chicarone's By George reports. They take a closer look at the stories and trends that affect everyone with Randy Little's perspective. And they do all this weeknights at 7. It's not just another newscast. Eyewitness 12 at 7. They get involved. 
We got to get a shot of this over here. Remember the great. They asked, they asked me to move over because I got another guest. How much moving can you do with this? Place? This is WLWT Channel Four. <laughs> Edgar uh, Burton, yeah, Charlie McCarthy, uh, Dorian and Nemo, a great ventriloquist act. Well. You know him as the sports director here at Eyewitness 12, but he is a gentleman whose roots go back a bit further than that, and in friendship and in history, and would you welcome, please, now, to our Ira Joe Fisher show, Mr. Walt Mayer. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. There's a man. Look at him. Is he gorgeous? Hey. Uh -huh. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Walt. Hey, Walt. Hi, Walt. Hi, we're hiding poor Mary back here. Talk, talk right into here. <laughs> Looks like, look like some from guys and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, nice to see you, really. See you, uh, she, your last time. Uh, fully was involved. I don't want to forget Lynn Gurian. <laughs> the last, when I was doing news, uh, Lynn Gurian was a uh, manager of the colony restaurant downtown. We had a live report. I'm doing a live report. I want to talk about, you know, the, the restaurant's on fire for it. He's telling me jokes. <laughs> Everybody got on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Now, this is a great little piece of uh, historical uh, coincidence. Listen to this. Walt grew up in Maysville and started working at the same radio station that Nicholas started working at. Yeah, w right. I always FDM. say the color. FDM. WFDM, you know, I, what are the odds of that, Walter? You know from uh, WFDM that the two of us would end up at the same station? I, I can't believe that. And, of course, later, subsequently, you know, when... Uh, I went to Channel 9, and uh, then Nick comes along, and he has a show at, uh, sure. at uh, Channel 9 following my noon report. So it was back-to-back, -back, the Maisel boys. That's right. We were yeah. an hour and a half. They couldn't get away from us. Yeah. Well. And you went to school with Rosemary. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you did that old thing of dipping her pigtails dip, in the inkwell. I dipped her pigtails in the inkwell. She hasn't so spoken to him since. That's right. She hasn't. <laughs> she sure did. Never she cared to walk. What an inkwell. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You had quills. <laughs> I'm not with these people, you know what I mean? We ran out of room in the audience, they said, hey, sit up here, okay? Now, Walt, for years and years, you hosted on Channel 9 the Noon Report. That's right. Which occurred, oddly, at 3 in the afternoon. I don't know why they called it that. No, you, but you... Huge, right? Of course, I think of you purely as a sports reporter when it comes to television, but you've done it all. That's right. You've uh, spun the frisky discs, and you've <laughs> reported the news, and you've done spot reports. Let's reminisce a bit with you about uh, some of your wonderful memories of being a part of this history of Cincinnati television. Well, you know, I grew up, uh, I grew up in Cincinnati, <laughs> in Maysville, Kentucky, but I grew up in an era, and then, gee, there's some great voices around uh, Cincinnati, <coughs> and, uh, you know, SAI had a great staff, WLW had a great staff, and I wanted to be on radio in those days. That's all I ever wanted to do. I'm one of those lucky guys who's doing something that all... In, all his life he'd ever wanted to do really was be, was be in radio, you know. So I used Tell to hang something. around the CKY and mm -hmm. go up there when Rex Dale was spinning records. I'd spend uh, a couple of oh, hours yeah. with Rex, you know. And uh, hey, kid, watching. the only way you're going to get radio is you're going to have to go out and beat the bushes and work at a small station and work a couple of years, and you're not going to make much money, but that's the way it's going to be, you know. Even Kids right. now, they come up, they say, how do you get in radio or TV? And I tell them, you know, they have to work for a small amount of money, and unless they can make 25000 or so to start, they're not interested, you know. Well, That's you were really hauling down the big bucks at WFTA. One dollar an hour. There you go. How much you get a dollar an hour? <laughs> more than I got. I worked for 75 cents an hour. 75? At FPM? They gave you a dollar an hour? They gave me a buck. I'm going to call Mitch Fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, they gave you more than they gave me. Nice they going, Walt. Now you've been going. I'm not laughing any of you. And what'd you, do on, <laughs> what'd you do on Sunday? And, and, on, and on the seventh day, I worked six days. Used to do remotes, you know, sock hops and uh, basketball games, get an extra three bucks, I guess. And on the seventh day, I worked a construction job. On the seventh yeah. day, we were up. With, a wife, with a wife and two kitties, you know. Yeah. Huh? Not much here. Not, that doesn't go too far, 40 bucks a week. Huh? What about so, you, Not even in Maysville. So what are you making today, Walt? <laughs> 45 now. Listen, one quick story about learn. salary. Russ Hodges, who was a great sports announcer. Yeah, Walter, CKY. You know, uh, started at CKY. Mm. I did not know that. He made $15 a week. Red Barber was making 35 And And, and uh, Russ went in to see L.D. Wilson one day, the little owner, mm. who's a nice man. He said, L.D., I hate to say this, but I can't get by on 15 a week. If, you, if I can't get a raise, I'll have to go somewhere else. And L.B. stood up to his full height and said, Russ, wherever you go, be sure to send us a card. <laughs>
He stayed. He stayed for the fifth. Oh, that's it's the scary stayed. out of four years of growth. You know what I would love to hear is some of the names that were that were sort of the uh, the people that you really uh, were uh, were honed in on growing up, Walter. Do you remember names like Dan Riss and Jay Joston and people like that who were at W.O.W.? Were you too young for that? Oh, I remember yeah. some of those names. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, yes, and Al Helfer was in town. You think oh, of the yeah. wonderful people who oh, were here. Great. There were so, such great names, really, you know. Ramona. Oh. That's right. Ramona. Rosemary Clooney and Betty yeah. Clooney. You betcha. Yeah. You betcha. And Bert sure. Barber. Yeah. Well, yeah. we are going to take a break. When we come back, we will talk, speaking of great names, with Nick and Mary and Bill and Len and Walt after this brief break. Stay with us. Yeah. Yeah, D. Felice and the oh, D. Felice trio, music. Kenny Poole and Lou Beautiful, Lowe's. yes, indeed. Yeah. I'd like to thank Curtin Mart for the curtain. Uh, we also want to uh, reintroduce to you our dear friends who have gathered here to chat about this uh, wonderful subject of television in this wonderful city of Cincinnati. Nick Clooney and Mary Wood. Oh, come on, let's applaud by all means, sure. And Mary Wood and Bill Nimmo and Len Gorian and Mr. Walt Mayer. And Joycey is with us in the audience. We have some questions for our guests. We have a lot of questions this morning. First off, we're going to hear from Sharon. Hi, I have a comment. My husband is now the all-night disc jockey at WLW. Oh, all right. Chris Dale was instrumental in his starting out in the business also. Oh, marvelous. Isn't that great? You think of the wonderful people have been there. Gene Shepard, you remember Gene? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Talking about Sally Sales. Was in town. Soupy yeah. worked here. He got at this station. From this station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thrown out of here. Soupy he was Soupy Hines. Hines in the, uh, <laughs> that's right. His name was Soupy Hines. Yep. That's right. Uh, Walter? I think, I think I'd be remiss, certainly, and it would be contrary to desire, Ira, if I didn't let you recognize somebody in the audience out there. Uh, somebody who I think really probably, I don't think that there could, there could not be, there cannot be a larger Cincinnati Reds baseball fan, or a fan of baseball for that matter, than Sally Wesselman. She's out there in the audience with her husband, Lou. Oh, well, nice. let's yeah. take a look at them. That's great, guys. All right. May I thank Sally for something? Sure. Sally was the president of my fan club in 1947. Come <laughs> off it. Right. Oh, you made that right. up, Bill. You made that up. Right, Sally? Is that right, Sally? 351 members. 351 people. 369, I remember. Right. Nick, that's a story I've got to do. Yeah. We've got to do a story on our Hall of Fame. You just betcha. That, that We've got to do that. that. Absolutely. I went to Western Hills, and Bill and his family were very good friends of mine when I was growing up. His sister and his brother, Lo. We are absolutely delighted to have you here. And Walt's been a friend for a long, long time. <laughs> He's a good, a good one, friend. I agree with you. They don't come And anywhere. they're hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Sally. We have another question, do we, in our audience? Yes, this is Margaret. Margaret, go ahead. Not a, not a question, but another comment. Margaret Nelson, and 21 years ago, I married Stan Nelson, made the Marywood column. <laughs> Stan was the all-night show, WCPO, WKRC. Oh, He's now a an ordained yes. United yes. Methodist minister. Oh, hey. oh, oh, yes. Yes. Thank you, Margaret. We drove another one to religion. <laughs> Boy, not, not, many, not many broadcast people become ministers, I'll tell you that. Uh, a lot more these days. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. WFBE. Yeah. <laughs> All right, another question. Yes, I'd like for you to meet Marianne. Hi, Hi Nick. Um, yeah. Marianne, Rosemary's Price Hill fan, and I want to, uh, who has six things in common with her, and I found out recently I have seven things in common with her, and I want to know. How is Rosemary? Rosemary's wonderful. Marianne. She's just doing great. As a matter of fact, I think this is probably uh, the best time of her life. She's just having such a uh, wonderful... She's working as much as she wants to. She just got back from uh, Japan, and uh, she, uh, you know, has, gets a chance to, to see, uh, see her kids a lot and uh, her grandchildren a lot and is singing better than ever and uh, is just remarkable. Thank you very much Thank for asking. You. Thank, Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you. Okay. We have time for one sure more? Sure we do. Sure okay. we do. Quickly, this is, yes. <laughs> this is Sherry. Come on, Sherry. Share something with us. I just want to ask Nick how he keeps 
so much emotion out of when you're doing a tragedy story or you know uh, i don't know that i do that it's nice of you to ask and nice of you to comment that i do I, i'm not sure that it's possible to keep emotion out when you uh when you're involved often uh with telling uh the the tragic side of the human condition uh if i uh, do keep that emotion out it is uh, it is a an effort of will to do so and uh, it is because it is not my job to transmit the emotion. You have the emotion anyway. You know, I don't need to dramatize the event. The event is dra dramatic enough. My duty is simply to a conduit of the information to you. And, uh, and I uh, hope uh, that we have uh, less tragic information to, uh, to impart to you and, uh, and more good information. And besides, Nick information. is one of the world's greatest living actors. <laughs> I wish that uh, were true. Yes. Wish that were true. Iris. One quick story about sure. what happened on a Christmas show sure. in the old days with Jack Sotkamp at the piano. Lenny, listen to this, Dean. I, my sweet wife, who I was not yet married to, came down to see her first television show. It was Christmas Day, and I wanted to be completely awed by the studio and the band. In those days, they had a 20 or 30-piece band, and Jack Sotkamp had gotten to Christmas a little bit early. And he started the program by doing arpeggio, did a wonderful one, went right off the floor, and never <laughs> came back to the piano again. And that was Merle's introduction to the world of, to the world of He television. fell off the end of the, the piano. Fell off the right end of the, the right onto the floor, we lay there. To the world of commercials. We'll be right back with our special guest. Stay with us. Can I take a second? Sure. You know, we, uh, you've been talking about history of Cincinnati television, and I don't think this has been said yet this week. And the important thing is that yours is the link, and in fact the last remaining link, with that incredible history of Cincinnati television. And we just are very grateful that you and your staff has this together and is doing such a wonderful job. Yes. I hope it continues. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Yes, it is. I am so thrilled to have all of you here, you here, and you watching. Thank you and bless you. Let's do it again tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guests of the Ira Joe Fisher Show stay at the Hyatt Regency, Cincinnati, downtown's newest luxury hotel. Transportation provided by Washington Limousine Service. Piano courtesy of Willis Music Company.